So we're going to up this a couple notches. This is a uh, Chronomag adapter made by Nerf Rev. Um, my friend, he uh, sent me this. And so I cut this down to about here. You can adjust this to whatever spacing you want. And I'm doing this for a newly acquired 18.5 that I found. Yeah. So we're going to glue this. When we glue this, we're going to put the plunger in so that that tab is centered. I'm just going to crazy glue it, but I want the catch and everything because I want this whole thing to work. And then we're going to put this in the Nerf Easy E kit and we're going to we're going to rock and roll. So to maintain the dimensional rigidity of it, basically I take this and then I'm going to crazy glue into here. And what that will do, without getting it on this, which what that will do is that will make it so this guide is perfectly straight. Then I'm going to put that 18.5 in there and we're going to see some serious shit. Probably have to uh, Teflon tape this in right here. That's what I figure. And make it a little tighter. Because there is a trick to tuning for, um, there is a trick to tuning for large diameter PTs. And, and large diameter PTs and short draw. Rather than long shot and long draw. Where you want more of a speed seal. Um, short draw, you kind of do and you kind of don't want a speed seal. It's got to seal right from the beginning because you don't have distance to accelerate you. The problem is this is a speed seal and so it, it it's going to lose a lot of air unless you use this properly and of course you cannot do accurate barrel calculations any other way. Now I have the glue on there, a whole bead around it. I'm letting it dry. I'm letting it go like so uh, upside down so that the gravity gets it. The main thing here is that um, I want this to, uh, the tabs to line up, and I want this to be oriented correctly. So when I put it in my blaster, and again, one-handed camera, yeah, don't like it too much. Um, but, yeah, what this will do is it will allow me to put a long shot spring in there, a real good spring. See, most people, I mean, you're using like an Apollo spring, it, it's just this little spring. And yeah, it's a pretty good powerful spring, but when you compare it to the amount of throw that a long shot spring has, the amount of torque a long shot spring has, there's no comparison. I mean, you would never even put a spring like this in a bird of prey. Even though a bird of prey has a four inch uh, solid to it, um, I like to use that solid space for pre-compression. The other reason you can use, that you, you want to use a longer spring is pre-compression. Now the original Chronomag doesn't have this much pre-compression. Um, but um, I'm, I have another one of these, so I'm going to use it for it. And we're going to see some serious shit because this is going to be pretty good. I like Nerf Easy E's kit, how it, um, or Easy E Nerf's kit, because what it does is it reinforces it to this nub right in there. See, and there it is. And I still have the I still have the red one, but I want to dial everything in and then put it, transplant it to that shell. I figure if I have an extra shell, why not, you know? But get everything working. Plus, this little barrel's about to get get brought out of here. And we're about to, to really, really, really take it take it further. But in terms of working on it, fine-tuning it, it's like, why why even mess up a Deadpool shell? And I know I'm being real protective of the Deadpool shell, because I don't have that many. But um, I have two that are my 18K Chronoses, and I got that one. But, um, if you have the extra shell, it's like, why not, you know? The next thing you gotta do is I gotta dremel these two tabs off. Because if you try to put the spring in there with the two tabs, yeah, you can see it. They put these two tabs, I believe, intentionally so that people wouldn't put bigger springs in there. But, of course, I don't buy that at all. I don't buy into that at all. Like, not, just don't do it. Plus, I'll probably put a little spacer in here just to make sure that the spring lines up. So now this is a duct tape spacer. Essentially, I just take a layer of duct tape, put it around it, and it makes it so the spring doesn't dance in the front, just like that's not gonna dance in the back. And that's gonna give me regulation of the dimensions. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Teflon tape this so this is smooth in here, and uh, it's not loose. So now, okay, I wrapped it with, with uh, Teflon tape. And you can see it. So this is non-adhesive Teflon tape. You don't want to use have any adhesive in here. And you notice I only I only have the front of the O-ring channel taped, not the back. I want this to engage earlier, is what I want it to do. But I still want the effect of the speed seal. I just want it earlier. 
So the way you do that is just to take the front of this and seal it so that what happens is that the um, that the speed seal starts at a, at, at a closer engagement to it so you lose less air but it still maintains the dynamics of the speed seal on the chronomag this is a, a good way of doing it so then when I put this in so then when I put this in it's going to right it's going to be loose but as air pressure hits it, it's going to be tighter. But still, it's snug. You can see the O-ring against there. I have it so it's barely pressing against there, but not so much that it's causing resistance. You don't want to be too tight with these, but you don't want to be too loose either. But you do want to start it so that the so that the speed seal is closer to the to the end, and so it engages a lot more, a lot a lot quicker, a lot more easily. For test purposes, we're going to start from 12 inches from the end of the chamber, not quite, um, not quite the end of the barrel. The reason I'm doing that is because on a monkey moth barrel, part of your gate is your chamber, the, your worker and artifact systems. Your the end of the barrel is the chamber, so you want to include that when you when you're doing measurements. And I think this thing with 12 inches will do it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this on the Dremel. And basically, I have tape around this so it protects the antonization because it, it, it can get really rough. So I should have a nice silver end on here and a cut. So let me do that cut. Okay, so there it is. I didn't hurt the antonizing or anything. But So what I did is I cut this in a ring. Like so, but then, <clears throat> but then I flattened it on top. But this isn't enough for a precision barrel. If I were to send it on a table, it would probably fall. So here's what you gotta do. Here is a uh, medium fine um, metal file and you have to file it one direction, turn it, again, turn it about an eighth, again, turn it about an eighth, again, turn it about an eighth. And this, I will usually watch a whole movie just doing this on my TV. I will just sit here watching a movie doing this. So though I'm showing you a few minutes of doing this, this process will probably go on for about an hour and a half while I level out the barrel. So every time I'm turning it, I'm taking the bias of, of this and I'm evening it out. Because, it's not, because if you try to file it just like this, and you just keep it in one position, you'll have a high spot and a low spot and it won't, it won't be even. But if you're turning it every time, you're averaging out your files every time. See? Just like that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to end up with is a totally square barrel end. Then after that, I'm going to I'm going to deburr this and that will be my next step. I'll show you how to deburr. Okay, so now I've got it. I filed this down. I'll give it a few more for good measure. Oh my god, it's this nice concentric flat level surface. We call this a barrel level. We keep the duct tape on there so that if we accidentally hit the sides, we don't mark the antonized aluminum. Okay. Now put in mind this process has taken me about about an hour and 45 minutes from the time I've cut the barrel from the time I take the barrel and cut the barrel to filing it to now. So yeah, it, it does take a long time to do it this way. But this is how I do all my barrels. Now, next thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use a deburring tool. The deburring tool has a little hook on it which has a little bit that shaves off just a little bit of uh, aluminum on the inside. So. You want to put the flat side, the side that has a notch on the inside, but you want to hold it at about a about a 45 degree angle, or 35 degrees is what I usually do. Give it a turn like so. Or just keep twisting it. So I'm on the inside of this, and I'm going to, you got it. And what this does is it makes a slight bevel 
as the dart leaves the barrel. There we go. I'm going to put my finger on the inside of it. Make sure it's not notching on the inside at all. Now look at that. See how pretty that is? So, now I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take this off. And I may have to repeat this if I find that this length is too long. But I want to go for the longest guess first. Then shortest. And then bring it down to about 11 or 10 if I, if I need to. Because I can always recut again if I need to. So here goes. Here goes off the duct tape that I used to, pr to protect the andonized finish of the Monkey Mods barrel. Look. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. See that? That's how you do it, right there. You cover it up. You concentrically crown it. There it is. Now I got it. Now I got a 12 inch Monkey Mods barrel. What I'll do now is I'll have a little bit of edging on the side here. First of all, I'll take my fingernail and I'll just cut it like so. Then I'll take a file very carefully without scratching the rest of the barrel. Just kind of feather it on that side. See? I know it's hard to see with my hands. Remember, my first priority is modding and getting it right. There it is. You can see I'm, I'm doing a very slight angle. So now I have that. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's it. And I did it while maintaining the consistency of the antonization, but it's nice and silver. And that looks familiar. It looks like the front of my swan barrels, doesn't it? Well, that's how I also do my swan barrels. And I also do my Merlins. That's how it's done. So now let's put this in the blaster, maybe give it a try. Ezekiel changed this. He made this so that um, this clamps on just like a um, a worker one. But the one he sent me, he sent me like the first one. So it has the two mounts up here. What I did to make sure this barrel doesn't go forward on me, knowing about this defect because he told me about it and put it on his Facebook page and everything, so I put a piece of tape up here because there is a space between here and here. See? So I measured out that space and I basically put a, a duct tape buffer. And this actually worked very well for keeping this from moving forward so it, it so it wouldn't leak. And and that worked for me. But the newer ones don't have this. This is this I was just one of the first ones to get one. So he did this for me. But that that's one solution right there. And you can see how the tape is now inside of here. And that makes it so yeah. But I can get it out, no problem. No problem, see? Just like that, see? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Cool little trick from the uh, Nerfers Retirement Home. <laughs> and what I did here to maintain the same space is I took I took it off my makeshift barrel here. By the way, he didn't send me a barrel because he knew I had a bunch of artifact and monkey mod barrels. So I just basically, this is the one that was on the, um, the Prophecy, the uh, Small Tube Prophecy I did a video on. And there it is. Now that is a chronomag barrel. It, may, it might be a little too long. I think it probably is. But I'm also resting on the fact that this is 13 millimeter. and might actually need more space than the 12.7 millimeter brass I normally use. So we'll give that a shot. I have a lot of power that's going into it. I got a big old, big red 18.5. And so really, well, yeah, you know, it, it, could, it could be nasty. So... Here I am, I'm gonna put this into here, as so, into this, there we go. I already screwed this down, God, that's gonna look great. Especially in a Deadpool, that's gonna look really, really nice. That's really gonna look like something. Wow, look at that. But I'm gonna test in the white shell first. Should be known that um, this does actually, it has a tight enough ring that it does actually stay in. It, you don't have to uh, screw it down, glue it, anything. Uh, you do want to oil these a little bit. That way this doesn't come loose. But I haven't had any big problems with it so far. So anyway, let's, uh, let's put this together and, and give it a test fire, shall we? I mean, we're going from this spring to that spring. That's going to be pretty gnarly. So I'm putting in one of these hooks. And already I feel like the amount of shell cutting you need is kind of ridiculous. If I can get it out of there. 
Ugh. God damn it. So I'm putting in this hook, and already I feel like the amount of shell cutting I need to do this is ridiculous. So as you can see, it doesn't fit that perfectly. And you have to kind of uh, kind of cut it to fit the hook. Yeah, so... Eh, yeah, I like the speed hooks better. The speed hooks are slightly lower, which might actually be the difference between prime and not prime. We'll have to see. And and it and it works without destroying this piece right here. So, mm, you know. But I'll give it a college try. He sent he sent it to me. I'll try it. It looks it looks fascinating. All right. Yes. 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 Yes.